Hi, Mike from the Rural Montana family. Well, since we are putting a hitch on this car here on this 2013 Model S, um, we also need to put wiring on for tail lights on the trailer. Now that said, even if you don't uh, plan on towing a trailer, you might need wiring for a bicycle rack, a cargo rack, or a cargo box that you put on here. So anything you put behind your car into that hitch that will block your tail lights, obstruct the tail lights, one or the other or both, you will be required to have lights further back on your rack or uh, or a cargo box so that they can be seen properly. And that's what we're going to do now. Taconcha makes a T1 connector which is a uh, little box with wires sticking out and then there's plugs on it. And all you do is you unplug your tail light, you plug the Taconcha harness into the tail light, then take the vehicle harness and plug it into the Taconcha harness. You do this on the driver's side and on the passenger side. And then usually there is a ground that you need to hook up somewhere to the chassis of the car. And you have to provide a positive for power to uh, this little box that's there. So that power will then actually power the tail lights. So it's not taking the power from your tail lights because that could cause an issue. That could give you a warning on your dash uh, that you have a light bulb out or something like that. Because usually nowadays uh, most cars have uh, tail light monitoring and if there is something not just right, they will notice that. But with that, uh, <clears throat> with those kits that were just tying in, uh, they take very, very little power. I believe less than five milliamps. So the car will not recognize that. It will not alert to it. And uh, that makes it so good compared to just tying it in and then hooking it to your trailer. And every time you hook up your trailer, you might get a warning. So with these kits, that works pretty good. And it's super easy. You don't have to cut any wires and nothing. The problem is for a Tesla, it's a little tough to come by, <laughs> especially for a 2013 Tesla Model S in general for a Tesla Model S because they're not made for towing or they're officially not made for towing. Let's put it this way. They have no tow rating or anything. And so because of that, there's no uh, uh, such T1 connector available. But um, they make a universal connector and it just doesn't have the plugs. You have to snip the wires and tie into or use what's called scotch locks, which are little clamps that go over that uh, just puncture basically the wires and get their signal like that. That's another option. Or if you wanna go really fancy, they have a zero contact option now. This little clamp that just goes over the wire but doesn't puncture the wire or damage the wire. It just senses as the power flows through. And uh, that's a really nice uh, way to do it. But uh, I don't know, they're like 280 bucks or something now. I'm not sure. I mean, price has been going up and down and it's been crazy, as you all know, with all the stuff. So, but uh, they're pretty darn expensive. And uh, yeah, I don't necessarily want to spend that money. Uh, my labor is free. So, <laughs> and uh, I would rather put some more labor in. So now that said, what are we going to do? And since I'm really cheap, I happen to find a T1 connector for a different vehicle. And that actually comes as a kit. And the kit includes uh, the wire that runs to your battery of the car. It's got a uh, little fuse holder in here, inline fuse holder with the fuse. This is a 10 amp fuse. And so that's what you run from the battery or from a good power source uh, to this box here. And this will then power these lights here. 
okay and then we need the signals going in and this those are these plugs here and T hence the name right T1 connector here they look like T's they just T into the harness usually so unplug the tail light plug it in plug the harness back in here you're done you just route the wires uh, the box usually has some sticky something on it or uh, some boxes have a, a, a little ear on it to put a screw in whatever and, and yeah it goes really quick like that and the universal ones that are like uh, same box here same of this uh, don't have these connectors so and that's what I'm going to do I'm just going to snip the wires off right here snip them off right here these black boxes they're nothing but a uh, box to properly connect all these three wires together so we can just snip that off and uh, then we have to connect yellow is your left turn signal brown is tail light and then the other side green is uh, for right side turn signal and then red would be for a brake light so in our case our brake and turn signal is combined so we will not be using the red wire that's as simple as that so this will just be terminated and not used green goes to the right side tail light the right side turn signal and yellow will go to the left side turn signal and basically the brown is not is it's here it's hooked together with the yellow so obviously the brown were taking the tail light the light actually off the left side and then these wires are a little shorter while these are longer so we can reach over to the right side with those and one more we have to do is a ground so it's got to get a, a ground somewhere and i know the model s has a couple grounds here in the back um, where you can just undo a nut and put that over the start and put the nut back on and that's it then this here this is going this is the four-way why is it called the four-way because that's four pins the exposed pin is the ground and then we got our right left and tail on here and this is a common trailer plug for trailers without brakes and batteries on it so for small trailers that you would tow with something like this uh, bigger trailers will have a seven-way plug because they will have brakes and some of them have a uh, uh, battery on there that needs to be charged and so on so they have usually a seven way the seven way is commonly found that what you see on a pickup truck it's a flat blade style seven way that's the common standard on a pickup truck and this is all we need basically on a smaller car here um, for us this will create a little issue because the trailers we have they all have the seven way on it so i will also have to make an adapter from this four-way to a seven-way so that I can uh, tow I got a couple smaller trailers they're smaller uh, for like snowmobile trailers or raft trailers that I can actually easily tow with this and that's the plan so yeah well we just gotta install it real quick the car back end is already taken apart because of the hitch installation here and so in here we had to gain access there's actually oh down in here down in there there's a bolt that holds the rear fascia so we had to open this up which is relatively easy you just pull this uh, gasket up pull this out here pull this interior panel back um, really easy same thing over here we just pulled this all back and then this will also expose let's see if we can get in there there we go back here is the wire that uh wire there that has the corrugated split loom on it and this appears to the right there let me see if i can point at it this one right here that goes to the tail light and so now it would be really easy because the plug is right there we just can't see it with the actual t1 connector we could just unplug this t in 
be done, that would be wonderful. But in our case, I got to get that unplugged, then open up this loom, and then I have to find my wires. So I got to find um, here on the right side, I will just have to find the right turn signal. On the left side, I will have to find the left turn signal and the tail light. And then I got to locate the ground. I believe actually somewhere under here, <laughs> which is not easy to get to again. Um, yeah, we'll figure it out. Uh, but I think my the box here will be over this way on the left side. So we got to find a ground under here somewhere. And I don't want to drill a, a hole and put a screw in anywhere on the body. I want to use a, a ground that's there. And so same thing here, we can see, where is it? Right back here. Uh, it's a little tough to see. There it is, there's the black loom that's going to uh, the tail light. So, well, that's the plan in the back here. Now in the front, let's go look. So our front's taken apart a little bit anyway. Um, for other reasons, I was exploring a little bit in here, um, trying to find stuff and took a little bit, uh, apart. So the battery sits down there and we got fuses right on top of the battery right there. And basically we need to tie into a positive and it doesn't really matter what the positive is as long as it's a good one that uh, we can uh, support, oops, that we can support 10 amps with. So there's multiple options here uh, of what you could do. I mean, this here would be a convenient option. Uh, this cable is going over to the DC-DC converter. And uh, there's a two, this here is a 225 fuse, 225 amp fuse. So it's a huge fuse, so I can easily add um, this little tail light converter to that. That wouldn't do any harm at all. Also over here, we got a bunch of fuses, relatively big, they're 40s and 50s. So that would be another option to tie into uh, right there. Um, there's more fuses under here. Actually, there's another set, uh, I believe another four or so. Um, Let's see here, that's how this looks like right here. So yeah, we got another uh, few fuses on the there, five on the there. Um, actually, this should be like this, I guess. Yep, right there, that's how it should be. And uh, uh, this one right here, this would be for the air suspension. And I thought this would be a good one to use because this car doesn't have air suspension. So that would be an empty bay down there. Well, as you can see, you can't see. <laughs> so it's not right on top here. It's actually under there. It being a 40, I don't think that fuse would blow, um, especially if we put the other 10 amp in after that, which we would have to do but it's really not convenient and easy accessible but it would have been my preferred place to hook it up but in case we have a dead short it may actually blow that 40 and then that would suck <laughs> because uh yeah we would have to replace it and getting under there is uh, not easy so hooking to any of those would be the better option uh, in case one blows to replace it but uh, they all have a purpose and they're all hooked up to something. And if I have bad trailer wiring and one of those blows, then something else wouldn't work. And these uh, fuses are not cheap, but they're not easy to come by. They're not easy to replace. They're in a really bad spot. So it's really not a great option either. So I think I'm gonna opt more or less for over here. Uh, right there to the DC-DC converter 
and that way I can bring my little fuse box that I add on here will just be right out here somewhere hanging right here maybe I can attach it to cable or something so it will be relatively easy to get to and replace in case it blows so that's kind of the idea then somehow we got to get from here all the way back here <laughs> uh, not sure yet where I'm gonna go through it's easy to route it on the inside um, there is the trim on the bottom so it's easy right along under here we can route there's a bunch of wires under there anyway so we can just pull these trims up at the front right here and and route that through there um, that's not too bad but obviously the battery or the fuse the area here this area is outside so we got to get to the inside which means we have to go through the firewall and uh, it's super hard to show here um, I don't know let's see if we go down in here you see this black plate there and uh, they're towards the left there's that big rubber boot looking thing and that's where the wiring goes through the firewall the factory wiring and that's basically where we need to get in um, unless I could find another uh, rubber grommet uh, or rubber plug somewhere that I can just cut a, a hole in it and run my wire through so I'll have to figure that part out as I go it also depends on what is on the inside right there right if we're right behind the heater and AC unit and stuff that doesn't help either I need to be able uh, from the inside to get access to that area because on the inside so we want to get under here so we would be somewhere we got to open all this up and uh, yeah it's a little work got my work cut out for me for running that wire it's uh, not just a five minute job it takes about two to three hours So yeah, that's just what it is. Um, depending on your experience, it may take longer, it may take uh, less time, short, short. Maybe you get it done an hour and a half. It all depends, I don't know. I average about two to two and a half hours I've done a few of those installs before. And uh, so yeah, I'm always about two, two and a half hours for stuff like that. To make it nice and uh, put it all nicely like under here and everything so but i'll better get going here on the driver's side i found a way to cheat <laughs> so after uh, getting unplugged back there there was a little uh one of those clips holding the harness in place but then i was able to uh pull it out through this hole here this is actually the back access to the charge port where uh, today's cars usually have the release this one doesn't have a release but um, so there's just this this little cover on there pull that off and I can get the harness out of here um, I opened up the loom right here I'm gonna snip this zip tie here take that loom off and then I can work on my wiring. Got the loom off, got my wires spread out here. Okay, so I can see. And so there's five wires here. That's a lot of wires. And uh, so one of them is ground and that's this uh, black one right here. Here it is. This here is the ground, okay. And you got on, where is that box here? There's the box. So we got this ground here on this box. Do not hook this ground to this ground, okay? This ground has this little ring terminal for a reason. And the reason is this is a much thicker wire here. So there is much more power flow in here 
than on the signal wires. So you definitely want to hook this to a ground on the chassis and not just to this little itty bitty tiny ground right here. So that's why this is made separate, okay? Um, so you gotta have this separate ground somewhere on the chassis, that's important. So um, I cheated a little bit here with all this stuff. Um, looked it up in the schematic. So we're on the left side here, so our black is the ground. Then there's a dark green, light green, which this looks pretty green right here. So this will be my stop signal, my brake. Then we got a violet gray, which is violet is purple, by the way. Is it this one or is it that one? Here, this is violet gray. It's got a gray tracer on it. So that would be my tail. And then we got violet, which is this one right here, which is uh, my turn signal. So I got those and then we got a pink black, which is this right here, which says outage. So I guess that is the one that will recognize and communicate if uh, there is a, uh, a failure in the light, I assume. Not sure. If you know, comment down below. It just says outage. So I assume that's what it is, that this is either uh, like a communication wire, I would assume saying there is a something out in the light bulb and not working anymore. So here we actually do have a uh, stop signal, which I didn't expect. I'm pretty sure, maybe I'm wrong. Huh. Maybe I don't even know the tail lights of this car. So maybe the stop and, and turn is actually not even combined. So, but in any event, since we have a separate signal, I'll be using uh, the red wire here as a brake light signal, I guess, because we have a brake light signal there. All right, so now we gotta get this wired in. Got the two in here on the left. So here we got our turn and here we got our tail. And so if you notice the plug is here that's facing or is going back towards the tail light and my wires are facing in towards the front rather than towards the tail light because that's the box will be inside here. So if I will put my wire on this side then it would loop around going there. So I add my wire on that side and I prefer those butt connectors over the scotch locks. Scotch locks uh, have a tendency to fail and uh, yeah, I replaced many, many scotch locks with butt connectors over the years because these scotch locks, uh, they sometimes even cut the wires and so there's all kinds of failure points there by using scotch locks. But if you buy a kit like this, uh, connector kit, whatever, something, it will come with scotch locks and so obviously you'll be using them, but uh, I don't know, it's up to you. I hardly ever use them. I prefer these butt connectors here. To do the right side, I gotta run these wires across over this way. And initially I just, uh, since we got this trim off anyway, I just uh, got the push pins out of here. They're push pins like that. And thought I'm just gonna stick it right back there, which that would have been totally fine. Then I realized we got a hollow beam right here. And there's a big hole right there. And there's a big hole right there. And that's even better than just stuffing it down in here. And you can see my fish tape is in and out on the other side. So no big deal. I went through totally smooth, no big deal. So I'm just gonna tape my wire to my fish tape and pull it over to the right hand side where I then need to do my connections on that harness there.
got this back together. Unfortunately, this little push pin thingy here broke, but that's not too terrible. We'll survive. So this here goes back to the tail light and I got my other wires in here. Going there. Yes, I got, a, I got them there. So um, I believe this is a plug for the subwoofer. But we don't have subwoofer since we have a base model. Um, so I guess we could stick all this right in there. There we go. And then here, this is for the little light that's on here. So, okay. So we got this part wired in. Trouble in the big sky garage. <laughs> Well, the wind picked up. That's one of the things we're supposed to have 30 mile an hour winds. But so I hooked all this up and ran power and ground from the battery real quick just to test here if that actually works the right way. It's a good thing I did that before I closed it all up because it don't. So I've been playing a little bit with this stuff off camera to figure out what's going on. So first I used the older box that I have, that rectangular shaped box, that's kind of the older style. And uh, it did some weird stuff and it's like, oh, probably the box is bad. I had that before. So it's like, yeah, let's just use the newer style I have. I put it in and it did weird stuff too, but it seemed to be different. So, I had to figure out what exactly is going on and it turned out to be somewhat difficult. So I probably should have looked at these tail lights first a little more. Um, after I noticed that there is a brake input um, that should have triggered a bell and said, hey, something's going on. So, um, but it's not only the brake input, there's actually more to it. Each individual wire going to each tail light comes from the body control module. And so the uh, left side has a tail light input coming straight from the body control module. And the right side has a tail light uh, wire coming straight from the body control module, which, okay, they could be on the same pin though, but they're not. They're de independent, they're separate. So everything is separate. The brake lights are separate, the tail lights are separate, and obviously the turn signals are separate. Also, these tail lights have a little uh, control board in them, a little uh, PC board. You can see that actually from the back side there. So there's a lot of stuff going on. And so I did a little testing and so I do have on my, let me grab one of the two here. So I do have my red and green here, which is, uh, the green is the right side turn signal. The red is the brake input. So if I hook this brake and put up, anytime I step on the brake and the brake lights come on solid, so this goes to the right side. So the brake light comes on solid on the right side. Then this controller obviously thinks the brake is on and it will power up the right side and the uh, left side while on the trailer output going to the trailer here but it will also power up the um, trailer lights so this is what this is all confusing so I took that off first of all and then it made way more sense. So why does it power up the trailer lights too? Well, it's not actually that one that powers up the trailer lights. It's actually the brown one that's for the tail lights because when the brake is on, the tail light one gets powered up too because the tail light, the outer ring here, gets bright as well. So this 
All the ring is dim for tail lights and bright for brake lights. So it is the brown wire here and it gets a signal when you step on the brake as well as when you turn the tail lights on. So either way, when the tail lights are on or when you step on the brake, um, it puts out to the trailer as tail lights. And obviously if you're on the brake, then left and right will be powered up too. If I said the left turn signal, that since my left is yellow and my brown is taken from the left tail light, when I set my left tail light, or when I set my left turn signal, sorry, then this brown wire gets a blinking signal. So when I set the turn signal for the left, the brown as well gets a blinking signal. So I get an output to the trailer for my left as well as my brown for my lights and all the lights on the trailer will flash, all of them. So, <laughs> so first of all, even with having the brake input on this box and the other box, we don't want to use the brake input at all on the Tesla. That makes it the worst. <laughs> then it gets better after that because we have a left turn signal and uh, we have a, a right turn signal but with uh, actually we have a, a left turn signal with tail lights with all the lights flashing and we have a right turn signal functioning properly we have uh, tail lights by itself functioning properly so we're pretty close the problem is the turn signal and the tail lights together so as soon as i set the turn signal to the left my tail lights will flash because the tail light wire that comes from the body control module that goes to here makes this outer ring flash as well which creates all my lights on the trailer to flash so the only thing the only one thing i can do is i need a light source that doesn't flash and well there's a light source that doesn't flash uh, when you set the turn signal your tail light will but then here on the tailgate we definitely have license plate light a uh, license plate lights here two of them they won't flash so again those two lights have their separate wire coming from the body control module Unfortunately, that's up in there and that harness is in the uh, C pillar going up and goes into the tailgate here through one of those two right there. So, and I found the wire in a schematic. It's a violet and white, pink and white, uh, uh, purple and white but I got to tie in somewhere up there and bring this back here to this box so that I have a signal for the lights on that is not flashing when the turn signal comes on. So that's basically the only problem really. Um, leave the brake off if you have a... Uh, where's the box now? If you have one of those boxes, there we go. So if you have one of those boxes that has a brake input, and I believe all of them nowadays do, if you buy a new one, uh, it has all the inputs. It doesn't require to have the brake input. It will function without it just fine. So, but if you have one, you don't want to use it, at least not on a Tesla, at least not on a 2013 Tesla for sure. I don't think they changed. Maybe they changed in 21 with the refresh. I don't know, but I would assume they're up to that definitely the same. So anyway, so don't use the brake. You can use your turn signal wire. So your green and your yellow 
you can hook those up accordingly right back here by the tail lights to the right wire and that will work fine and then the brown wire the tail light wire it needs to go to a source that does not blink and that would be the license plate light so you would have to run that uh, and a, a longer wire forward to the C pillar there locate the wire um, for the license plate light and tie into it now that said you got to be careful I looked back here to see if that color wire would be back here and sure enough I found that license plate wire color back here and then I looked in the schematic again because it was plugging into the tailgate controller so I looked at the schematic and sure enough there is a different wire for the tailgate that's the same color as the wire for the license plate lights so you want to be careful you want to make sure you find the correct wire in the harness and it's not back here you got to go up there because it goes right up to that corner there where it goes into the tail light so so that's what I have to do now. I still haven't ran the positive to the front. I'm just running my test leads back here, providing um, the ground and the positive for this box to work. So now that I've done all the figuring for and back, I guess both boxes would work anyway. <laughs> um, so it doesn't really matter if I use the older or newer box, I think. but. It seems like, I don't know, uh, there was actually, maybe there was another issue with the old box. I tested so much I can't even remember. But I, I know for sure the newer style box works. And so I'm just going to use it at this point. Because I'm kind of done with testing and going for and back and all this good stuff. So I need to hook this back up. Yellow to my left blinker. Green to my right blinker red on here I don't need the red that goes with the green I don't need and then the brown here that is with the yellow that's the brown that I need to run forward and find the license plate light hook it to that license plate light wire and that's the three inputs I need to make this work to get the correct outputs here on the trailer then I still need my ground and I need a uh, positive from the front so those are the two thicker wires here a little bit thicker so um, I opened this up here obviously to dig in and the ground sits down under there and since I have this side open I think I'm gonna put the box over here even though it was intended to go over here with the short wires and then the green they give you the long to go across right but um, since I have my ground right there my positive probably will be coming back on this side so these two will be there the green will be there so I'm just gonna run a yellow across over here so a little different gotta do what you gotta do so I hope you're not all confused about it main thing to remember do not you hook up the wire that is labeled brake don't need that and do not hook up the wire that is labeled tail light to your tail lights back here you need to have a source for the tail light that does not blink that's not flashing which I found to be the license plate lights so now that's what I gotta do and then I can test it again. In my search for the uh, license plate wire, which is this one, I found there was actually a second one that had the same colors. And uh, knowing that the controller that's back there uh, has that wire on it and comes up here and goes up to the tailgate. so. I assumed that I will find two, so I opened up the harness, went all the way through, found two 
okay and then i opened up the harness further down here so i could see this one here this one goes towards the front the other one goes towards the back so the one from the front should be mine so then i use this test light right here that i can just puncture the wire with in hopes i got the right one because i don't like to puncture wires and then not do anything with them but as you can see that light is on and now the lights are on if i turn the lights off this light will go off i also made sure if i set the left and the right turn signal that this is not blinking and it is not so I'm gonna up oh, that's just down there the connection so I'm gonna cut this wire here and tie my uh, brown wire to this one right here So I've done some more exploring in regards to routing the positive wire that needs to go all the way up front towards the battery and uh, I decided not to go all the way through the interior because it's tough to get through the firewall there's only the two options uh, the one is where the big boot is and the, the main harness goes through and the other one is is where the the heater wires cables come in they're high voltage cables there's another grommet there other than that it's pretty much solid especially on this side over here on the passenger side so being right here we can see right here these high voltage wires um, they go to the uh, DC DC converter and they go through a grommet here into this which is a, a hollow channel that goes all the way forward and also in there since we're here you probably uh, I don't know right there so right here it's a little hard to see right there there's the coolant line comes in here also goes in there and this is a big open channel we can go up front here so what I did is I opened this up here uh, took the liner off which is only attached like uh, with one two uh, what else do we have three uh, there was one up here somewhere oh here it is four and where else here five five of these uh push pull kind of rivet things and there's a, a stud right there unfortunately that one broke off so i gotta figure out the solution for that part but uh, anyway that uh, exposes the dc to dc converter and those are the the cables that we've seen disappear back there and they come out right here so this goes in here and this is just a channel like that all the way back there so it's wide open so there's plenty of room uh, I'm probably gonna fish them through stick uh, fiberglass rods in here and uh, I take the grommet out on the back and then pull my cable through go like on the back side here um, probably attach it somewhere here not sure I can go up here and over and this way or I can go under and up there somehow I'll I'll get over there right here this here is the battery and right on top of the battery there that's where my uh, uh, fuse box is where I would like to attach to and actually I'm gonna attach where this cable is here 
but I'm gonna attach up there. I don't wanna do it down here because I need access to the fuse that I'm going to install. And if I would add it here, which is a possibility, I couldn't get to the fuse because this is behind uh, the wheel well liner. So, but yep, so somehow we'll come through here, go up here over there to the battery and uh, then we should be okay. Well, yesterday was t-shirt weather and today it's snowsuit weather. <laughs> Just kidding. It's been a few weeks uh, since I did the install, but uh, I guess I got to show you that it actually works. So, and uh, I'm going to show you the adapter too. So that's what we're doing now. So this here is the adapter I made and we got the four way end here. And then this is the seven way plug that uh, the trailer plugs in too since our trailer has uh, a seven way on it and not a four way and I left plenty of long cable so that I can actually plug this in inside the car since down here somewhere there it is I just pulled that up that is my four way car end that I installed coming from the adapter so yeah, this comes from the box that I installed and here we got our adapter and we'll just uh, plug that together just like that and then we'll take this part and I'm actually just gonna route it right out here just like this. I'm gonna just 
let it come over the edge like this and then close the trunk on it. And so this way, this connector actually stays even inside and is protected. And only this connector comes outside here and it will have to plug into this here on the trailer. All right, now we got this plugged in. So it's hooked to the car right here, hooked to the trailer right there. And now I just gotta start turning the lights on and then you can see how that works. All right, let's turn the lights on. So here we got the lights, right side turn signal, left side turn signal, then we can turn the lights off. This is brakes. Okay, we can turn the lights on and add the brakes and add right side turn signal and left side turn signal. So everything works now just fine and yes the reverse lights the backup lights don't work because on a four-way flat there is uh, no extra pin for those on a seven-way you could do the backup lights so but since we don't have that on the car or don't since we only have the four-way obviously the reverse lights on the trailer will not work but we got the lights that we need well, that was it. Now we got it installed. It is working. Um, the installation uh, was a little bit tricky, I have to say, since, uh, yeah, the signals come individual from the body control module to the tail lights, and the tail lights have uh, circuit boards in them. That made it a little trickier there, but uh, it's definitely possible to do. Now you can go ahead and do it, and uh, well, the Tesla Model S is definitely capable of towing. It's got plenty of power and uh, we'll have some videos coming where we tow this trailer. There's multiple things uh, we need to do or want to do with this and uh, so we'll get you some videos on that. Give us a thumbs up for this video. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so yet. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos and Go down below in the description and click on the link to our Redbubble store. We got all kinds of cool stuff for sale. Shower curtains, socks, dog beds, anything imaginable. And we have t-shirts and hats too, so like everybody else does. In any event, thank you for watching. Goodbye.